Welcome to the biggest show in the world, Sports Betters TV. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Happy Monday. Brand new week for us. This is Rob the Mad Hatter from the biggest show in the world, Sports Betters TV, sitting here talking to my boy, The Dream. Welcome back, Playboy. Joe, happy Monday, gang. It's the dream in the house, and we got a lot to get into and talk about today as this weekend was, oh my God, abysmal. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, nice weather though, man. Just had a good time yesterday with the family, just kicking it, man, and just uh, kind of relaxed a little bit, man. How was your weekend? Oh, uh, the weekend was dope, man. Uh, aside from, um, we did strike out with the, uh, with the, with the parlay. The series parlay on Friday. Um, I guess the Angels just did not want to come to come to play. The Angels got us, uh, and just a bizarre weekend where you saw the Rangers beat up on the Angels. You know, two games out of the three. Uh, you saw the Phillies. The Phillies, dude. The Phillies swept the Cubs. Swept the Cubs, uh, man. Unbelievable. Swept the Cubs. <laughs> which was just, I mean, just hysterical as far as I was concerned. Um, just, just watching the, just watching the Cubbies lose to the Phillies was was silly. It's just baseball, dude. Like I said before, baseball in general. You know what? Baseball. Is, you know what baseball is? I'm gonna tell you what baseball is, brother. All right, here we go. About baseball. All right? Baseball is that moderate driver to slow driver that's in the fast lane that won't move. Okay. <laughs> You get behind them, right? And you're thinking about going around it and letting it go, but then it speeds up a little bit, so like you can't get past it, okay? <laughs> and then so but so you try to move to the other lane, but there's cars in the other lane that won't let you by either, like like soccer, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like 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 WNBA's in the third lane. So it's like you can't get around it, you know yeah, what right. I'm saying? You're sitting there in the car <laughs> and you're going from lane to lane that you just finally just get in the lane, get behind them, and just give up. Oh, <laughs> uh, no doubt, man. No doubt. I hear you. I hear you. But, uh, hey, big ups to uh, everybody that's out there this morning helping us out, guys. We really appreciate you. And uh, getting into some baseball news, kid. My boy uh, Johnny Cueto goes to the uh, Kansas City Royals player. No doubt. What do you think about that? Very, very interesting trade. Um, uh, like to see how it pans out. You know how uh, – Cueto's funny – Funny pitcher to me, so uh, it will be interesting how it pans out. But I think that's a probably. A, I want to say it's going to probably be a pretty good improvement for uh, the Royals. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, you know, he did. They did give up uh, the Reds. Did uh, I'm sorry, Case Sizzle gave up three good young pitchers for him. But they're going for it. They're going. They're going ham this year, kid. They're, they think they uh, they're going to win the whole thing, dude. So that's their that's their mantra on there. So we'll see what happens with that. I mean, Cueto is um, 2.20 ERA in his last ten starts, bro. And he did shut out the Rockies in the um, in Coors Field in his last start, brother. Got you. So, so I mean, he was going to be a free agent at the end of the year anyway, so it kind of makes sense for the for the Reds. So, I think get the Reds, uh, yeah, it'll 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 uh, get them going for the next, um, you know, at least next year. Uh, Zach right. Granke, dude, uh, his scoreless uh, inning his scoreless inning streak is uh, going at forty five and two thirds innings. Kid, the Mets beat them yesterday, bro, three to two. Very interesting, I know, and I and I noticed, but the Dodgers were on a seriously long road trip. They're going to be really happy to get back in L.A., man. So uh, I look for them to just come back alive as soon as they get home and get settled in. Well, Dan, Dan called the Mets yesterday, dude, and I was like, ah, I don't know about that. But he made a good point. He was saying, you know, how Granky, you know, he just had the birth of his child, and then they flew him all the way from L.A. to New York again. And it's like, you know, they're, they're going back home now, and they got the Oakland A's, so it's like, what's the point? You know what I mean? Just yeah, give him but one you more day. Think, like the like the birth year, like like when my kid was born, my son was born. I was like so amped up. So it's like, how do you respond to that? Is it you know? Do you go? Is the guy gonna have the greatest game of his life because his son was born, or is the guy gonna have a bad game because his son was born? That would be a hard life altering moment. That I, I would say it's kind of hard to gauge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, his you know what I'm saying. His thing was, you know, he's probably, um, <clears throat> you know, on a high from it. But then he's traveling, you know, all them hours going to New York the, the and then, travel. you know, okay. you know, doing all that. So hey, it is what it is, man. So, uh, but anyway, the Mets did win that game surprisingly, dude. And uh, yeah. speaking of your LA Angels, man, uh, I can't believe they lost the first two games, but then they went ham yesterday, including uh, Mike Trout, dude, a grand slam and a solo home run, number thirty and thirty-one, best player in baseball by far. 
They are not my LA Angels. They are your LA Angels. <laughs> You've been talking about them the most, not me. <laughs> oh, I know. And they absolutely played me this weekend. But hey, it's like that. That's why the numbers are very, very, like I said, guys, the numbers in baseball are low. We don't play baseball for a lot of money. I'm not getting all been out of shape and worrying and getting ticked about it. Listen, you talk to me about a football game when there's an upset, like I like I had mentioned, if that uh if the uh you know if the Tennessee Titans go in and beat the Steelers on a Sunday night game, yeah, I'm going to be irate because I probably got a few hundred dollars on it. But baseball, we're talking about money that I would spend on maybe a six-pack of beer, 12-pack of beer case, something like that. Never, ever really, really high numbers. Um, I may get into a little bit high numbers, you know, when the playoffs start, the World Series, I can get involved in that. But as of right now with this season, it's volatile, up and down, and as uninteresting as baseball is, there's no way I'm getting involved with these numbers. I'd like to thank my man Theo, ba- Theo Bear out there retweeting the show clown man swag tommy king jp yippa 82 urban sjc is out there uh joseph del rosario casano uh jordan ham uh benjamin rope for prez direct sports solution ben brian terrell tip talker c rodriguez jr sir mata uh super mario locks uh live life now and justin hernandez just to name a few thank you guys for retweeting the show this morning oh definitely man definitely so uh let's uh let's look and see what else we got so the only real decent pitcher that's out there right now is, uh, and I don't even think he's really that decent. He, he did have a no-hitter this weekend versus the Cubs, but uh, Cole Hamels, dude, that's the only one left. And, uh, you know, right now the Texas Rangers and the Dodgers are probably the most um, apt to get him. So, uh, and if if I had to guess, I would say the Dodgers, but, um, you know, the Dodgers and the Rangers right now lead the race to get him. I mean, he did have, dude, nine straight games where he didn't even have a win. And then, uh, you know, had the um, the no-hitter versus the Cubs this weekend, dude. So, what do you think, man? He's getting no type of run support, so it's very hard, you know what I mean, to really grade him as far as wins-losses are concerned. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Um, <clears throat> you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, I think he'd make a good acquisition, you know. to There's some teams out there who could use him. The, the Dodgers may be one of them, but I know their payroll is pretty heavy. I don't know if they've got, you know, if they want to spend that kind of money or they have the room for that money. I think there's, I think he's one of those guys though that if you put him on a on a good team and you can make him like the third or fourth pitcher in the rotation, I think he's gonna provide you a solid outing, especially if you're able to get some run support. So there's a few teams out there I think should be, you know, should be in the in the process of trying to trying to make some waves with him. Well, I've heard that the Dodgers have like almost unlimited money, bro. <laughs> so, because they were actually looking at him and Cueto to bring them both on, bro. Imagine that. That's what Dan said. But uh, they Listen, did not get Cueto, and uh, hey, it is what it is. No team has unlimited money, and if they do, it'll be limited very quickly. Uh, if the Yankees, you know what I'm saying? No team spends more money than the Yankees. You know that. Yeah, right. So, right, right. Exactly. Um, and even they decided at a, at a point that they had to pull back and they couldn't do it like that. So uh, everybody, you know, you make your you you make your decisions. I, I mean, I think if he's worth it, um, yeah, I think you have to evaluate whether this guy is going to be worth it for your team and worth it for your chemistry. Um, and, and and those other kind of things come in play too when it, when you talk about picking up a, a you know a, a veteran pitcher. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, and I'm surprised that the Rangers are even in buying mode, man. I mean, yeah. they are four and a half games out of the wild card and the division. So four and a half games, I mean, that is, a, you know, it's like one or two series. So, so I guess they're still in it. I was at the gym and I'm looking at, I'm, I'm watching ESPN a little bit, right? And I see this thing fly up and it says that the Buffalo Bills are having a competition between Matt Castle, EJ Emanuel, and Tyrod Taylor. Oh, God. And I almost fell off the <laughs> treadmill when I read that, aside from the girl being dope in front of me. Yeah. Um, I almost fell right off the treadmill when I read that. And I'm like, dude, could you imagine, just think about this for a minute, right? You in camp right now, it's hot as hell, you know, because because the workouts start getting, I don't know if you guys only think about the about NFL workouts or camp workouts, but the workouts right now have picked it up quite a few notches. Sure. Um, especially, especially for the cats that's not stars. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. The cast is not stars right now. Yo, it's like they getting ready, you know, to go to war. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It, it's it's get up, run, you know, you know, five, six miles today. Come and look at some film. Hit the weight room for two to three hours. Come and look at some film. Let's practice some agility. Let's do this. Let's do it. Whatever your issues were, your deficiencies were, you're on it right now. Big time. So now you're busting your ass like that. Right. And the teams and, and, and all the locker rooms, everybody's 
Yo, we're gonna be dope this year. Yo, we're gonna do this this year. We're gonna do that. The coaches go, oh, we're gonna run the option. We're gonna do this. Oh, we got this new system. They are screaming and selling you so much trash to mentally get you prepared, right? And then at the end of it, they say, yo, and last but not least, we got Shady McCoy in this year. This is gonna be our year. And last but not least, right now we got EJ Manuel, Manuel, <laughs> EJ Manuel, Matt Castle, and Tyrod Taylor competing for QB. You know, everybody is like, yo. <laughs> Are you kidding me, son? <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, Jets just take off their pads and just throw them across the practice field. <laughs> and I rate. Said, man, I believe in it all this nonsense. And they're going to put these three out at the helm. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, man. Crazy. Who do you think will emerge out of that, man? Uh, dude, honestly, I think they're going to use all three, like I said yesterday. So they should go rock, paper, scissors. Because Castle will come <laughs> and get hurt by week three. EJ will come in, fumble the ball, and get thrown out by week seven. And yep. then you have to end the end of the show with Tyrod Taylor. I do. I think that's an awful cast. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, speaking of uh, quarterback um, con- uh, competitions there, uh, how about the Ohio State University, dude? Uh, Braxton Miller has taken himself out of the quarterback competition, and he's bringing himself to either an H-back or a wide receiver, bro. What do you think Very about that? Very interesting. What do you think Very about that? Very interesting. Yeah, guys. I wonder, if, I wonder if he's taking himself out or if him and Urban just don't – they just can't. They don't see eye to eye. Because Urban, you know, Urban's personality can be annoying. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. But, I um... at that dude. And, and then he's full of himself because obviously he thinks that he's the reason why he's won all his games um, and all his championships. So I know there's, like, no talking to him. Definitely, guys. And uh, if you look at a uh, what an H-back is, it's not to be confused with a halfback. What it is, it's, uh, it's similar to a tight end. What you're doing is you're basically considered one of the four backs. So you're actually back from the line of scrimmage. So it's similar to like a slot position. But so you got basically you got uh, two quarterbacks, uh, you know, vying for the job. You got Cardell Jones and uh, JT Barrett, man. I like Cardell their, Jones better. In their offense, though, the way they run their offense and the way he's traditionally run his style of offense – you know, it, it, that stuff will all work for him, um, the way that Urban runs his offense. That stuff will all work for him because, you know, he's not – he's that – he's that that trick play, more running running the ball type, you know, it, that whole – he doesn't need the dynamics of a quarterback that can throw the ball downfield well. Yeah, definitely. But, hey, we'll see where it lands, man. I think the Ohio State University is definitely the team to beat, though. Oh, dude, please don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I Why hate not? that dude. Oh, <laughs> uh, I know. I know. It, 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 Anybody that knows, you guys don't know this. I'm a Florida Gator fan, and, I, and I'm and i still stuck on this, and I'll be stuck on this for a while. Uh, I know Urban Meyer won a championship or two over in Florida. I, I understand that before we get into it, but I am a Florida Gator fan. But the way Urban Meyer left Florida, to me, just was just, just a bad, bad look. Um, he left a lot of kids out off to dry you know he has supposedly this crazy health problem that miraculously got cured you know a year after he left the left left the team to go on to ohio state and i just i i just hate when these coaches do that you know you recruit yeah. these kids and you're promising them this and you're going to be around for the four years to do this and kids are coming to your program for that you know you meet their families you give them a sense of of, of reassurance only to bail out when you find the fir- when you find a deal that's a little bit better or something a little bit more attractive to you i'm not a fan of that at all well most of these co- college co- um coaches they go to the nfl try it out for a few and go back to college so um what do you think about big chip kelly doing that kid at some point I think Big Chip Kelly will be back <laughs> in, in college after this season. <laughs> you know, I was talking to a Giant fan uh, the, the, you know, this weekend at a party. I had a great time at a party, by the way. But one, my boy Mike turned uh, 40. Congratulations to him, one of my best friends. Great dude. But anyway, uh, we went over there, man, and uh, we were talking. I was talking to the Giant fan, and I said, you know what? Not for nothing, but who's your competition in the East? Dallas. Yeah, but you know Dallas is Dallas. I mean, you know they're you know how they are. You know what I'm saying? They got the dope offensive line, but um, I'm not sure. I mean, who else besides you know Philadelphia? If it, you know, because we think Philadelphia is going to be pretty bad. But uh, I think you know, Philly's going to be bad. Yeah, I do. You think so, right? Yeah. I I think if the Giants put it together, they got a pretty good shot to to make some noise in that division. I think that the I I honestly think that the uh, I think Philly's going to be um I mean I think Dallas is going to be 
I think Dallas is going to be a, 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 a good team this year. You know, and guys, I, I get on Dallas fans because they're the easiest ones to pick on because there's a lot of them and they <laughs> are all sensitive, but with big mouths. Um, so I don't know how. I, that's my thing. How are you? How can you be sensitive with a big mouth? Yeah, right. <laughs> you, you, you can't. That's like a contradiction. That's I, I don't get that. But anyway, um, and, and you guys, know I am not sensitive at all, and I love it. But um, Dallas, I believe, is going to be a good team. And, and you guys don't know this, but I actually, prior to last year, I rooted for Dallas. I because I always, I've always. I, I didn't. I don't like them as a fan, but I've always liked them. I've liked a lot of their personalities, a lot of the players that came on the team. I think a lot of decisions that they've made though over the years. I think they screwed up a lot of things, and they could have been a lot more successful sooner if they maybe had had held the line a little bit. But um, the one interesting thing about Dallas, the only dynamic that I am going to say is, I still think that letting Demarco Murray go is a was a huge loss on yep. your part. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. That's 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 one big you know big step in the wrong direction for them, in my opinion. But hey, we'll see where it lands, dude. Um, you're thinking the Seattle Seahawks are going to emerge, though, huh? I I am. I, listen, I think they need one more receiver. Um, but they obviously did it last year without that receiver too. I'm just very impressed with what they did in the off season. As far as I'm concerned, you know they didn't lose a lot. Um, I think they gained a ton, especially in getting Jimmy Graham. That definitely helped solidify their passing game and their downfield, which you know. They, they were winning without that in the first place. So, I mean, you're greatly improved from last year, if, if you ask me. And, and, you know, they went to the Super Bowl last year. So that's all telling me that they're going to be, you know, pretty damn good this year. Yeah. Um, So I'm, I'm expecting them to be good. I'm expecting Green Bay to be really good. Uh, obviously, Denver's really good. I just, oh, Denver, 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 Denver. Denver worries me at the end of the season. They worry me about... The, the, the length of the season, uh, how fresh they can be at the end of the season. Other than that, um, you know, I, I think they're going to be really good. Obviously, the Patriots are always, a, you know, always an issue, especially in the in the world's weakest. Of, I mean, yeah. guys, the Patriots are dope. Let's not make no mistakes. They've been in the like one of the worst divisions, though. For they've been the king of that division forever. Oh, yeah. And that division is not that great. Hasn't been that great. I know, especially with my Miami Dolphins, dude. Who, uh, if they got Tannehill at the helm, I'm sorry, but I just don't see it. I just don't see it, man. You know what I'm saying? So I don't see it either. Once I saw him get that uh, contract extension and get all that money, I was like, oh, man. Damn. I happen to agree with you on that. But, uh, you know, the Dolphins, will, well, we'll see. You know, the Dolphins are up and down. I I can't. I've, I've never been able to figure out the Dolphins. You know, since Marino left with them, it's just been a mess. I know. I know. It start, they start off really well. And then in December, just go <laughs> awful, man, awful. So uh, speaking of a couple of things, guys, we got my man Eric Parkala calling in at about five minutes. Uh, he's going to break down some college football for us, so I'm pretty excited about that. We do have nine baseball games that we will talk about. And uh, one thing, dude, tomorrow, guys, I will be traveling. So we do not have a show tomorrow on Tuesday morning. We will not have a show. So, you know, we will also put that out on all our social media outlets. So, um you know, we'll be back at it on Wednesday for our sports book review dream. I can't wait no for that doubt. show. I can't wait for that. That's going to be a great show. Um, and a lot of you guys, if you got some friends out there that uh, are new to gambling and don't know what's going on, you might want to have them listen in. And those of you that, um, you know, aren't that knowledgeable or yourself, you know, listen in. Obviously, catch it when you can catch it. If you can catch it live, that's great. If you got to catch us on the, you know, later on later on in the day, that's also that works as well. Um, just you know, check it out as there should be a lot of pertinent information. I'm even interested because Hat knows a lot more stuff about it than I. I mean, I know a lot of stuff about it as well, but Hat. It's got a couple of more caveats that he's oh, you know, some he's stuff that irks the hell out of me um, on some of these books, man. Oh. Yeah, he's it, ha, hat's really tough with that, and in 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 and out of all kinds of things. So he uses them like like really like to the utmost. So I'm more of a you know one two guy. I got a couple that I use. I keep a couple of bucks here, keep a couple of bucks there, and you know go back and forth between the two. Cat hat is like. It's like the mall for him. He thinks sports books <laughs> and the mall are the same thing. He's like, he is, when he goes on his computer, it's like he must have some. You, you must have to talk to your because you got so many players. Well, I, I have a, I have them all bookmarked, man. So I just go into I the just, folder and I just open up all the. What my computer screen looks crazy in the morning, dude. It's just like ten different books, like blah 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 blah, <laughs> right up, dude. And um, you know, some of them have some really good stuff, but some of them, man, some of them have some really 
dusty, shaky stuff. And uh, we will talk about not taking the bonus money as well on Wednesday, dude. So we will be out of the office tomorrow, guys. So uh, we got our guests calling in. But speaking of the NFL dreams, I guess the NFL is going to do some uh, random football checks now, like during the games and after the games. You know, for the deflate oh, gates, Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the deflate gate controversy. They're going to be doing it, you know, just come in at halftime and be like, yo, let me check them real quick. So that's what's going to end up starting to happen, dude. They got, and, and, and they need this. To, you know what? They're going to always be at, like, the Bears games because they're going to be checking the ball. But say, let me check it real quick because you ain't doing nothing with it. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me check. Let me, can I get that? Can I get that ball for a minute? Why don't you guys kick rocks and let us play? I wish that they could do that in the middle of a game if it's booty. Yeah, right. They could right. come in with like a whole other team. <laughs> the NFL will have their whole team established. I don't know, some veterans and stuff. And if the game is booty and you're dusty, they could come in and be like, okay, you guys hit the showers. We're going to play this team because the, the fans, are, I mean, you're pouring everybody to death with your awful gameplay. Uh, definitely, man. Uh, let me get our guest in here, see what he's got to say, and we will go from there. Let me see. Do I got my man Eric Parkala on the line today? Hey, good morning, guys. How you doing? Oh, uh, what's up, dude? How are you? I'm doing great. Beautiful morning in Las Vegas here. Oh, uh, football nice. season getting ready to start up in a little bit. So one of the a little bit early for you, player. A little <laughs> bit early for you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's never too early to start talking football. Oh, no uh, doubt. No, no, no. I just mean early in the morning for getting up because I know you're calling us from Vegas. And we always appreciate our West Coast callers as. It has got to be the biggest pain in the neck to be on the biggest show in the world because it's like 6 o'clock there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so 6.30 this morning, but that's the way I like it. I get up before everybody else in my house and I get my stuff done, so that's uh, that's the way I prefer to do it. Oh, sweet, man. All right, sweet. all good. So what do you uh, what do you got on the agenda today, brother? You uh, you feeling so froggy about some football? <clears throat> yeah, I've got a, a couple teams I looked at for some uh, over-under win totals. Uh, starting right now, uh, the uh, first, since we're in Las Vegas, I decided to look at UNLV. I know UNLV isn't the most sexy team out there, but they, I mean, if you look, there's there's some money that can be made on them, specifically against them this year. Okay. They got a new head coach, Tony Sanchez. He was the uh, coach of Bishop Gorman last year, and they actually won the uh, high school national championship. So he's making a leap from, from high school to college, and I think that's going to be a challenge for him. This is a team that the uh, the total is uh, two and a half uh, under minus one thirty, and that's actually what I like because this is a team that out of the four of the last five years they've only won two games. Wow! They had uh, two thousand thirteen. They went seven and six and went to a bowl game. Well, that's a little uh, out of the ordinary for UNLV. So since two thousand eleven, they've actually played an FCS team three out of the last four years, <laughs> or uh, four the last four years they've won just one of those games. Wow. So even with an FCS team on their schedule, that's actually not a guaranteed win. It's uh, it's against Idaho State in week four. That I just think that's an awful spot for them because it comes after the first three weeks where they play at Northern Illinois, against UCLA, and at Michigan. So they're, they're heading to the uh, the Midwest twice, and then they got to play Ooh. UCLA at home. Damn. Yeah, they could be uh, punch also, drunk. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, smoke. absolutely. Could definitely be and, drunk from that. <laughs> and it's right in between uh, the, the game that follows that is the uh, big rivalry game up in Reno against Nevada. So uh, that's a tough spot for him. So by, by no means is that a guaranteed win. Uh, San Jose State on October 3rd, that's another possible winnable game. Uh, schedule makers weren't really kind to the Rebels this year, though. Yeah, right. They have back-to-back -back home games just once all season. That's against Boise State and Hawaii. So chances are they're going to drop the Boise State game, probably lose the Hawaii game. But, I mean, Hawaii could possibly be winnable. I see maybe two winnable games on the schedule. They always lose that Hawaii game. Because they get yeah, down they, there and, and the weather and the girls and it's a wrap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Wyoming's always been tough for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could you could look at Wyoming uh, in Laramie on November 28th. I believe that's the, the final game of the season. Yep. A possible winnable game, but the Cowboys will actually be off their bye. And UNLV hasn't won at Wyoming since 2003, so I wouldn't necessarily call that a 100% a winnable game. Okay. They've only got 10 starters returning. Uh, difficult schedule, I think, is going to take its toll. I actually wouldn't be surprised if the Rebels were banged up quite a bit by the midseason. So, a lot points to under two and a half uh, wins for me uh, at the at the small price. I think that I'd go with the team that hasn't won more than two games just once in the last five years. 
Wow, under two and a half wins for UNLV, the Rebels, kid. Unbelievable. Yeah, I believe going to be one of the worst teams in college football this year. Looking at their schedule here, they got the, you know, like you said, the Northern Illini in the uh, the first game, uh, UCLA, Michigan, Idaho State, Nevada, uh, San Jose State, Fresno State, Boise State, Hawaii, at Colorado State, at uh, versus San Diego State, and at Wyoming. Yeah, that's 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 a rough schedule, bro. Yeah, even their winnable well, games it, come. It seems that way right now. Yeah. We don't, I mean, obviously, we don't know. Those teams gonna all turn out to be booty. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's true. But I, the my biggest thing is the the new head coach. I want to see how Sanchez transitions from the, the high school game to uh, to college. Even though he was at you know one of the the top prep schools in the country, it's it's still a, a different game. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. So under two and a half is what you're feeling right now. And uh, is that at most books, that same line? Can you get it at three anywhere? Uh, I I didn't see it at three. I've actually picked up the sheet from Cantor. So they're one of the ones that puts out the the early team totals. I didn't see it at uh, any of the other books I used. But chances are with Rebels not actually having – won more than two games, you know, most of the time. Yep. I don't think you're going to get three. Uh, even the two and a half is a little juiced at minus 130. Got it, got it. So can, is Cantor like a conglomerate of a bunch of books? Or is that just one uh, casino? They're they're independently owned and they operate. Yeah, I don't know if necessarily uh, – they're in different different sports books. Like the Silverton Casino has a Cantor book. The Palm right. Casino has a Cantor right. book. So they're, oh, okay. they're actually separate from the casino itself. Oh, okay. So they they probably give the lines to these respective sports books. Well, well, can't they? They, they lease space in the casino. Got it. Okay. All right. Yeah, I knew it was something along those lines. That's why. Uh, I'm going to go Baylor over ten wins. This one uh, minus one forty. This one might turn a lot of people off because of the loss of Bryce Petty. I actually believe Art Brow's system is more plug-and-play. You, you can go back to his Houston days, and he had Kevin Cobb his entire college career at Houston. He had a year with Case Keenum. Those, those guys are, I mean, they're, they're first and second all-time leading passers in Houston history. You can look at the transition from RG3 to Petty. Seth Russell, he's going to be the new quarterback for Baylor this year. He, he's a good quarterback. He's going to do just fine. He got some playing time last year when Baylor was blowing everybody out, and uh, Petty was able to sit. So Seth Russell, he's got some experience. He's he's big. He's six three. He he'll fit our brow system just fine. Uh, my well, we're never, wor- not- never worried about Baylor's offensive punch. The issue oh, with no. Baylor is their defense. <laughs> yeah, they, they actually only any- gave up. Sorry, go ahead. Have they made any imp- improvements to the defense? Uh, they actually only gave up uh, twenty five points last year. So. I mean, that's not horrible considering they were scoring about an average of 41. They're going to return nine starters on both offense and defense. Yep. So it's going to make them one of the most experienced teams in the Big 12. I would I would expect the defense to be a little bit more improved with the, with all the starters they have returning. Wow. Yep. Okay, cool deal. And, and they're, they're, I will give them – their schedule is a bit soft. But I think Baylor's schedule is kind of soft. I mean, it looks that way anyway. It, it generally has been also as well. Yeah, I mean a big. It's all yeah, big and that, cool, so. if you remember, that kind of hurt them last year in the playoffs. Yeah. So they have a, they have a cakewalk yeah. schedule again until November. I don't right. think their toughest test will come until Week 13 when they have to go to TCU. I kind of uh, they I got kinda uh, somewhat in agreement with you in that. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean that comes off a three game schedule of uh, at Kansas State, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. So Oklahoma might give them a little bit of trouble. But I mean, it's it's the TCU game is also on a Friday night, so it's a short week for Baylor. I think Baylor and TCU will both likely be undefeated going into that game. Uh, I hope it's the same uh, as entertaining as it was last year. I mean, we had that shootout oh, yeah, where it was awesome. you know they came back from what down three touchdowns in the second half. But I'll say Baylor finishes the regular season probably around eleven and one, and they're on the outside of the playoff picture, looking in for a, a second straight season. All right, cool mm. deal. If you look at their schedule, man, I, how many points are going to be given to SMU the first week, Mike? I ah. know. I, I, <laughs> oh, man, I don't even know if you <laughs> – I don't even I want to put a number on it. I imagine it will be 
it'll be high 30s if not 40 41 it's going to be it's going to be up there oh definitely if you look at this you got at smu you got versus lamar versus rice versus texas tech at kansas i can't wait to take lamar though i, 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 I can't i'm gonna do that I can't wait uh let's see Brian Millar. versus west virginia versus uh iowa state that's their homecoming game uh at kansas state uh, versus Oklahoma at Oklahoma State versus T. I'm sorry at TCU ski and uh, versus Texas the last game. So uh, yeah, so hey. they're not even really challenged till uh, November 5th when they play Kansas State. Well, West Virginia was tough last year. I don't know what they got going on this year, but they weren't that bad last year. But at, it's, no, what's, it's it, they're different in their building though. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I believe uh, wasn't uh, West Virginia the only team that actually beat Baylor last year? So there might be a little. Uh, revenge there yeah and they didn't just beat them they they handled them from what yeah. i remember man i remember that game so um all right cool deal so you're feeling the over 10 wins with baylor and uh they should definitely do a championship in that um uh, in that division man yeah i believe they said that they're gonna they're gonna have a, a conference champion it's not going to be a split championship but there's still no championship game so yeah. that's i mean you can call somebody a champion all you want but until you until you put that championship game out there and you give them that extra time to play and show the uh, committee what the what the conference has what the conference can bring to the playoffs yeah it's not really going to do them any good well that's what hurt them last year they, they, they there was no conference champion so if there was oh, they would have definitely hopped the ohio state university and it would have been a different package but all right man so uh what you got any any other teams that you're looking at? Yeah, I'm going to stay in the Big Ten and the uh, Big Twelve. I'm going to go under five and a half wins for Texas Tech. <laughs> I, I hate this team. I don't even know if I can say how much I hate this team. Uh, the defense is awful. I think the coach is terrible. Uh, they do bring back nine starters on offense, eight on defense. But those eight starters last year, they were part of the problem. I mean, they allowed 41.3 points per game. And as far as the schedule goes, they aren't beating Arkansas, TCU, Baylor, Oklahoma, Kansas State, or Texas. Uh, the game against Texas. It's in Austin on a Thursday night. The Longhorns are coming off their bye, and Texas Tech hasn't won at Texas since 1997. So, I mean, they play 12 games total. They're going to lose six of those games, basically guaranteed, and they may very well lose to Oklahoma State and at West Virginia. But to get under five and a half, we only need them to lose one of those games. Oh, at West Virginia actually, for sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. at West Virginia. That's, that's a tough place to play, especially for those big 12 teams uh, traveling east. So I, I actually have, I have four winnable games for Texas Tech uh, against Sam Houston State, UTEP, Kansas, and Iowa State. But UTEP, that, that's not a guaranteed win for them. They're a little less experienced this year than they were last year. But Texas Tech, uh, UTEP gave them all they could handle last year. I mean, they only lost by four. They lost 30-26 to 26 as 21-point underdogs. Uh, of course, that was at UTEP. And this year it'll be at Texas Tech, so things might be a little bit different. But, it, I mean, it's not a, it's not a guarantee. All right. Uh, I that's think they start out two and zero. I think that's in, I, I think that's interesting. Um, you know, you're talking about a program that is that is a, you know a decent program, and then what you got here is is you got that little bit of a pride factor. Um, also in, in play with them, you you got a couple of teams coming in that they may show up for at home. That you you said you 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 got them not winning more than five games. Yeah, I think five is the uh, the top number. I've got them. I've got them winning. Mm, that's tough. I think that one's tough. But yeah. go ahead. It's your it's your call. I, I, I'm just interjecting my my slight opinion <laughs> because you know how these colleges work. You know, especially if you get a program that you know, like like you get a program that you think's gonna be good and then they turn out to not be good and then now like the kids have no confidence in themselves. So you know it's it's you know they, they just come in flat. You know, like. Like there's a lot of question marks surrounding, you know, how you know o Oklahoma State may be this year. You know, there are probably some more question marks with you know Kansas State. Both of these teams are coming in to Texas Tech to play them. You know what I'm saying? Which you, you know, if the, if these teams aren't playing well and if the kids, you know, mental psyche isn't right, you get a Texas Tech team that's hyped up at home. You know, strange things happen. You know, strange like like we were talking about. West Virginia beating Baylor last year and handling them. Strange things happen as unexpected sometimes, and especially at home. So that's an interesting one there. Yeah, like like I said, I, I have four winnable games. So with a with a total of under five and a half, there's there's room for you know one extra win that I wouldn't you know gotcha. might not expect. Yep. But I think they're going to start out two and zero, and then they have to then they go Arkansas, TCU, and Baylor in weeks mm -hmm. three, four, and five, and that's at Arkansas. They're not going to win that game. I think Arkansas is going to be a lot more uh, a lot more improved this year. 
So, I mean, they're going to go... <laughs> they're going to go from two and zero oh to uh, two and three in the matter of uh, three weeks. So I, I would question, you know, how how their mindset will be going into that uh, Iowa State game the, the following week on October 10th. But I think everyone will be happy. You know, they'll be expecting big things with so many players returning. Uh, it's going to be Kingsbury's third year. But I just I just see that hope and that you know all that. Uh, optimism fading when they realize that this is another four and eight or a five and seven team i wouldn't be surprised if kingsbury finds himself on the hot seat after the season all right cool all right deal man cool. kid dream i'm getting an amp for football bro i'm getting real amp. <laughs> I'm, I'm very amp I, I trust me I, i'm real amp um I, i'm just i this is an interesting one that you're bringing out I, I i find this one very interesting um i like the office that texas tech runs uh, I actually expect them to be improved this season. I, 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 I'm, I'm struggling with, with the five, but as I'm looking at the schedule, I can see what you're saying. Uh, just interested in, obviously, interested in seeing what some of these teams. You know, Arkansas does start off every year. They start off really slow. Yeah, they, uh, they actually have one of the, uh, the best running backs. Uh, running back uh, tandems in the in the country this year. They have one of the biggest offensive lines. So, uh, you know, that's kind of Bielema's style. He's, you yep. know, when he was up at Wisconsin, he had the big offensive lines. He had the great running backs. So I think that uh, they're definitely going to be a ground and pound team. And I don't know if Texas Tech can, can necessarily hold the, hold the ground game in check. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Cool deal, man. Um, you have any other teams that you want to discuss before we uh, get into the lovely baseball card that the Dream loves so much? I got one more team to go over real quick, gotcha. and that's uh, Miami of Florida. I got them over six wins at minus 120. I actually feel the exact opposite about Miami as I do about Texas Tech. I, I like this team a lot. Uh, I don't think they're 100% there yet. But I think they could they could get to seven and five, maybe even maybe even eight and four with an upset. So they're stacked with talent. I mean, Miami they're always stacked with talent. I just want to see Al Golden get the most out of them. Uh, even with them being so uh, stacked, the best thing I like about this team is Brad Kaya. It's their sophomore quarterback. He actually started every game last year as a true freshman, including the bowl game. Uh, that experience extremely valuable. He went. Uh, he had a fifty-eight point five percent completion rating. And threw for almost 3,200 yards with 26 touchdowns and just 12 interceptions as a true freshman. So he did lose some weapons with uh, Duke Johnson and Philip Dorsett leaving. But like I said, the team's still stacked. I mean, if people don't know who Brad Kaya is, I mean, right now, they will know after this season. I wouldn't be surprised if he was in the Heisman talk uh, starting next year, but he'll certainly be there his senior season. Uh, if the Canes can get past Nebraska in week three, They'll head into Tallahassee on October 10th undefeated. I believe they have Cincinnati. Uh, they have a bye week and then Cincinnati. But it's, it's likely this team will lose all three to Florida State, Virginia Tech, and Clemson in week six, seven, and eight. They could also lose on the road to Duke in week nine just because they are coming off that Florida State, uh, Va Tech, and Clemson schedule right there. You just, said the that final three... Hatter, you just said that because Hatter's on. <laughs> oh, oh, the the, the Dukies. <laughs> the Dukies. You just said that because Hatters are. I don't know why you would have said they're going to lose. You said they could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they could, they could ahead, lose ahead. on the road to Duke. So you never know. Duke, Duke will come and surprise a couple of teams. Oh, oh yeah. don't but, worry. We know all about Duke. Ask the hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Duke, Duke <laughs> and Yale. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, uh, the final three at North Carolina against Georgia Tech and at Pitt, those are all winnable games. Uh, like I said, this should be a 7-5 and five team, maybe an 8-4 and four with an upset mixed in. Well, with a win total of six, there's a little wiggle room. So I like, it. I, I like over six at minus 120. I like that play a lot, Dream. Okay. I like that play. I like the U. I do too, actually. The U. Absolutely. So, uh, I do too, actually. Yeah, yeah. I think right. they're going to be improved. All right. Cool deal, man. So, uh, Eric, awesome information, man. Uh, my man Tip Talker is asking uh, if we should fade UNLV every game. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know Maybe to start the season because they do have that Northern Illinois, UCLA, Michigan schedule. Yeah. But the problem that you're going to see is you're going to start to see some high spreads. So I don't know if necessarily the value will be there. Yeah. But, it. I mean, I don't see this team, you know, being very good. <laughs> All right, I got you. Like I said, one of the worst teams in college football this year. All right, cool. Let deal. me ask you up on a personal question. Uh, just, just to, I want your opinion. Which conference do you think is tougher? The Big 12 or the Big 10? 
Uh, I think it's I think it's the Big 12. I'm a Big 10 guy. I'm a Michigan guy myself. So when you were talking about how much you hate Urban Meyer, I'm there with you. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's the I think it's the Big 12. I think that you get TCU, Baylor, Oklahoma, uh, Kansas State, um, and then even Oklahoma State and uh, Texas. Texas isn't going to be horrible. It gives Charlie Strong maybe one or two more years. But there's a once you get past Ohio State and Wisconsin in in the Big Ten, or I'm sorry, Ohio State. Yes, Ohio State and Wisconsin in the Big Ten. There, there's kind of a bit of a fall off there, and even Wisconsin bringing in a new coach, Nebraska bringing in a new coach, Michigan oh, bringing in a new Mich- coach. I was gonna say Michigan State, Michigan bringing in, you know. Oh, bringing- I'm sorry, yeah, Michigan State. Yes, Michigan okay. State. So once you get All past right. Ohio State, and Michigan State, that's when you start to to see a little bit of a fall off. Yep, cool deal. Okay. All right, good, man. And uh, my boy Tommy King is telling me that the uh, Baylor is already at 34.5 versus SMU. Yeah, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised to see how it, see 30s. I wouldn't be surprised to see that, you know, up by like up to 37 uh, by by game time. SMU, they're not going to be a very good team this year either. Uh, yeah. I personally think, um, and just because we're talking about it real quick, and I know we got to get into baseball, but I think that, that t- you know, you mentioned real quick, on Texas, I actually think Texas is going to be pretty good this year. Um, I'm going to be very interested in them as I saw potential last year, but I didn't see it directed the right way. I'm thinking that this year this guy maybe has everybody really buy into the system uh, as they did have some success last year. You know, I think that they're going to be greatly improved this year, Texas. You know, that's an under and over number. I'd be in, You don't happen to know what theirs is, do you? I have the sheet right here in front of me. Texas is six with the six. over minus two forty. Mm. Wow! <laughs> yeah, so they they juice that quite a bit. Yeah, they do. Yeah, that's tough. So, okay, I'm gonna fall back on my Texas talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh. t- Texas last year, if you remember the Charlie, you know Charlie Strong came in and he had a you know a my way or the highway kind of attitude, and he kicked a bunch of people off the team right at the start of the season. Which was do- which so. was dope though. Which sometimes you have oh. to do that to, to, to let him know what, what, what it's all about. And his personality is like that. He's going to be aggressive, you know, a tough guy, which I like because a lot of times these kids need that. You know what I mean? Especially coming from, you know, the the, 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 the prior coach. I don't know if my man had a lot of strictness in this Texas team. Um, he just he, he seemed to have that passive um, you know, that passive, cool personality, you know, not, and I think that maybe with, with the change of personalities needed, that needed to hap, that needed to happen with this. Cause they seem like the opposite ends of the spectrum, the two coaches. Oh, absolutely. And I think that you'll definitely see Texas, you know, they'll, they'll be in gear a little bit more. I think the, the dismissal of all those players at the start of the season kind of, kind of shook some things up and made some Wake things up, real for a lot up. of those guys. The one thing I know that's going to be serious, they are going to definitely be in top physical shape no matter what because he's not going to have it as far as as, it, as far as physicality he's a big physicality guy he's, those guys are going to be in shape so uh and with the offense that they run i mean they're coming out the gate notre dame rice cal oklahoma state you know tcu you know i, I notre dame oklahoma state tcu that's that's a rough you know that's going to be the rough three-piece start for them uh, in my opinion, they should they should be able to handle Rice, Cal. You know, who knows what Cal's going to bring to the table. Um, and in Kansas State, Iowa, Kansas, I don't know. It, it, interesting schedule. But uh, we got to keep our eye on them. I think they're going to be – I'm going to – I think they're going to be greatly improved this year. Yeah, the defense was very good last year. What I would look for is to see if that offense can actually get something going because they'll be they'll be a very good team if they can get that offense going. Yeah, no, definitely. I agree with you 100 percent, definitely. But uh, I mean, it's it's there. If, if like I said, I think it's a matter of the kids buying into the system. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yep, cool deal, man. All right, Dream. So I think uh, that pretty much does it for college football, man. Uh, I can't wait to uh, just start. As it gets closer and closer, man, I'm just getting excited. No nope. go oh, definitely. There. We so, go. Eric, we got um. I know you got a couple other things you want to um talk about real quick before we get into the baseball. Okay, yeah, real quick, I just want to let uh, let everybody know that uh, I'm running actually a sports betters TV special for this. Uh, any package you buy on my site will come with, uh, especially a buy oh, buy two, or buy one get I'd one like free. I'd like to add that 
we don't get anything from this, by the way, before <laughs> anybody yeah, starts. Right. With this. Eric yeah. is doing that all on his own. He's not paying us. He didn't pay us anything. This is all him. Just let me put that disclaimer out there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so uh, on my site, we've got a, a buy one get one uh, free. Where if you buy any college package, I'll uh, I'll give you the the same NFL package for free. And I know there's a lot of stuff out there about people that sell picks, and there's a lot of negativity. We actually have on uh, on a couple of our packages, we have unit guarantees, which means if we don't get you to a certain unit uh, profit, we'll continue your service free of charge until we get you there. And we are registered with the Better Business Bureau. So that's something that I'm extremely proud of. Uh, I'm trying to take the uh, the lead on uh, being transparent and having some integrity in the, uh, the sports betting. Not so much the, the sports betting uh, business, but more so just the uh the people that sell picks i actually hate the word tout i can't stand it <laughs> so so the uh the pick sellers try just trying to uh take the lead there on uh, being like i said being transparent having integrity so we are registered and accredited with the better business bureau all right cool deal cool man well eric i really appreciate it brother thank you very much for coming in um we always appreciate you coming on and uh spreading the knowledge player Yes, thank you guys for having me. Uh, Dream, thanks for uh, working through my schedule difficulties. I know we've been going back and forth uh, no through DM problem. quite a bit. That's what I do, play, I, and I enjoy doing <laughs> it. Not a big deal. I love working. You know, love working at it. Love scheduling great guys and love having great guys with good information on. And anything I could do to try to help out other people and uh, win and be positive, I'm all for it. So not an issue, brother. I appreciate that. You guys keep keep doing what you do. All right, thanks. All right, brother. man. Thank have you so on. much, Eric, for coming on. All right, thanks. Have a great day, guys. All right. All right, you too. All right. Sounds good, man. So, Dream, we got nine baseball games to go through, and I think Aww. I think we can uh, I think we can make it happen pretty, pretty nah, quickly. Nah, let's just not. <laughs> <laughs> let's just keep talking about college football. Play. I know, I know, I know, How right? How you think Michigan going to be this year with my boy, head coach in Big Blue? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Harpizzle. Uh, I can't wait. Harpizzle. I think Harpizzle is for a headache this year. I got to be honest with you. Uh, Harpizzle. I love it. I love it. All right, man. So uh, let's jump right into the card and see yes, what sir. we got going on. We don't have anything during the day here, guys, but uh, we have uh, everything starts at 7.05 start. We have the Atlanta Braves coming into the Baltimore Orioles. And uh, the Baltimore Orioles finally got out of their own way yesterday and uh, won two games in a row, Dream, surprisingly. That's but, a surprise. Yeah, you know, that's all well and good. But the problem is, is that they beat the Tampa Bay Rays, which is <laughs> – not so great. And uh, big ups to Dan, dude, call, calling the Atlanta Braves yesterday, dude, at a plus 190 money line. Doc Dizzle, very nice. On it was part. like, you oh, got the... going for Atlanta. Yeah. You got Gaussman going for the uh, Orioles. He's 1 and 2 with a 5.18 ERA. Wood is 7 and 6 with a 3.78 ERA. Braves, 20 and 32 away, 46 and 52 all around. Uh, the Orioles, 49, 48 and 49 all around, 27 and 18 at home. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I got no no opinion for this for me. Atlanta Braves. My boy TK is telling me this, and I see it on my screen as well. They are one in seven in their last eight games on the road, dude. Damn, unbelievable. But they did beat St. Lucia yesterday, so maybe they're feeling themselves a little bit here. For me, I think that this might be a series where the Baltimore Orioles kind of try to turn their thing around here. They're only they're only one game under 500, but they are several games out of the uh, the wild card right now. Uh, let's see. The total is going under in four of the last five Atlanta games and four of the last six Baltimore games. Juice is kind of heavy, guys, at a minus 180 here with an under over of seven and a half. So I don't really like this game in particular, but uh, best of luck if you are playing it. Uh, the next game we have on the ticket is the Kansas City Ro Kid, the Royals. Smacked Keiko around yesterday, man. Yes, sir. And uh, you know they're they're kind of feeling themselves, especially after bringing in Johnny Cueto to the lineup to the rotation. Uh, Case Sizzle, Edison Volquez, uh, Cleveland, Cody Anderson, Cleveland favored, dude. Minus one fifteen got me scratching my head with an under over of seven and a half. Gotcha. Wow. And Anderson's two and one with a one point one nine one ERA for the Indians, who are third. Excuse me, nineteen and thirty at home. Nineteen and thirty wow. at home. Volquez is nine five nine and five with a three point one five ERA. The Royals are twenty five and twenty on the road. Um, interesting series. I can't believe they're getting beat up like that at home. That's embarrassing, man. Uh, Kansas City superior in most categories here I'm taking a look at. But Cody Anderson, you know, his ERA has been pretty good. 
I just, there's just no way in hell I would bet the Cleveland Indians today. Me Kansas neither. City, 14 and 5 in their last 19 games, guys. Definitely uh, make it a run to October. Cleveland, 1 and 5 straight up in the last six games. I wonder which te- dream one of these top teams is going to basically co- you know go on a slide at some point. Yes, it sir. always it happens every year. Yep. I just don't know which one it's going to be, man. I don't either. You know what I mean? Because you saw the Cubs. The Cubs have just basically just folded. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? The Mets, uh, you know, I mean, they're kind of trying to do their thing. But it took the last two games against the Dodgers. San Fr- I know. I, I'm not. The Mets, I know the Mets. are Uh-uh. San Francisco Giants, maybe they fall off. Who knows? But uh, I, we'll, I know we'll, the Mets are going to fall off. All right. So, if you're, you know, I mean, you got the Cubs. You've got the, uh, let's see. You got the Cubs, you got the Giants, and that's pretty much it in the NL and the Mets. So, you know, one of those teams could emerge if the other two fall off, which, uh, like I said, the Cubs are pretty much doing that. I know Vegas is happy because there's a lot of Cubs future tickets out there. Uh, The next one we have on the ticket is the Chicago White Sox coming into the Boston Red Sox. Chicago White Sox do 200-1 to to win the World Series. Man, the odds have jumped. Craziness. Uh, let's see. Chicago White Sox have John Don Danks on the mound, which uh, oh, you, I know you love to fade Danks. <laughs> Kid, the Boston Red Sox went ham last night, man. Big pop and two home runs. 11-1 mm. victory last night, guys. Unbelievable. But uh, Boston has Joe Kelly. Boston minus 130 with an under over of nine runs. Big Poppy must have got a, a goodie bag from Valco like he used to <laughs> back in the day that nobody ever talks about, but... He was also a steroid user. Yeah. Jay Kelly is pitching for Boston. He's two and six with a five point seven four ERA. Uh, the Red Sox twenty four and twenty four at home. The White Sox twenty two and twenty eight on the road. Mister Danks five and eight with a four point six six ER Izzle. All right. So uh, taking a look at it, man, this is a really tough game to call. I don't really have any any opinion on it whatsoever man looking at these two teams i think that the white Sox have been pretty hot though man eight and one in their last nine on the road dream yep that's pretty sick yep they're not that far out of it either to be honest with you so hey we'll see what happens i mean i know that they're not going to be uh selling any players at this point uh boston two and nine in their last 11 games man beating up on the detroit tigers last night uh, White Sox, 4-1 and one straight up in the last five games. And like I said, 8-1 and one in the last nine on the road. Um, but they're 3-8 and eight in the last 11 when playing the Boston Red Sox, dude. So something to keep in the back of your brains, guys. So, hey, those are some trends to take a look at and see if you feel froggy with it. Let me know what your opinion is on Twitter, Sports Betters TV. So uh, the next one we have on the ticket, brother, is uh, the Detroit Tigers at the Tampa Bay Rays. What a nasty game this is, man. Unbelievable. Uh, Detroit, Anibal Sanchez. Tampa Bay has Nate Carms, who's actually been pretty decent. Tampa Bay minus 123 with an under over of seven runs. And, excuse me, Carms is 5-5 five and five with a 3.4. Excuse me, 6-5 and five with a 3.5 or a 6. I can't even make it out. My, guy, my my eyesight is awful right now. <laughs> uh, I think it's five and five with a three point four seven ERA. Uh, the Rays are twenty five and twenty nine at home. For some reason, the the, the my, on my page this part is so light as far as the the boldness of it. Might have to darken that. Uh, Sanchez is ten and seven with a four point five nine ERA. The Tigers are twenty three and twenty three on the road. Um, interesting matchup, guys. All right, yeah, taking a look at uh, Nate Carnes, his last couple of starts. I mean, he did shut out the Phillies. Uh, five innings pitched, three hits, zero earned runs. But before that, at Kansas City, dude, six innings, nine hits, seven earned runs, man. So, oh, Nate Carnes. I, Detroit and Tampa Bay, dude, what a nasty game this is. I'll tell you, man. Detroit, four and nine straight up in the last 30. In 18 out of the last 25 games when these two, um, I'm sorry, when Detroit has been playing. So a lot of overs popping with them still. Even last night, man, 11-1. to 1. So next one we have on a ticket, man, is uh, the New York Yankees kind of uh, turning their season, you know, kind of kind of separating themselves from the rest of the AL East in the pack there. No um, surprise to anybody that listens to Sports Betters TV as one of the hosts. <laughs> You bias. You don't like them, though. I'm biased. I'm biased. I hear you. 
New York Yankees have uh, Ivan Nova and uh, Texas have Matt Harrison. New York Yankees minus 120 with an under over of nine in Texas. Dude, you remember what Texas did to them last time they played each other, man? Swept them in their building. Yeah, I know. I don't expect to get swept right now. The Yankees are in a good spot right now. Everybody's feeling good. Everybody's believing in themselves. Um, they do need to get something out of their picture. You know, it's a shame that they don't want to get involved in this picture thing because, you know, they they actually should think about going to get Cole Hamels to, to, to you know, honestly, um, because... You know, I really like what this team's doing. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm thinking maybe their mindset is they don't want to mess with the chemistry as they're playing good with what they've got. So I don't know what their mindset is, but I do think that they still need a little bit more on this pitching angle with them. But I love what I'm seeing out of them. Um, They're playing very good ball, and they're playing great baseball as a team. Very impressed on how they handled the Minnesota Twins, who Minnesota, say what you want about them, are pretty good at home. Oh, definitely. And the Yankees went in there. And, you know, they got two of the three games, and uh, I, I was very impressed with their performance. That being said, we got Harrison on the mound today in Texas. He's 1-1 one one with a 5.40 ERA. The Rangers are 16-26 and 26 at home. 16-26 and 26 at home. <laughs> Ivan Nova is 2-3 and three with a 3.34 ERA. Yankees are 25-25 and 25 on the road. Um, and I would, I'm almost leaning the Yankees uh, to win this series. All right. Sounds good, man. Well, uh, happy birthday to A-Rod. It's his 40th birthday today. Yes, sir. So uh, we'll see what he does, you know, out on the field. I mean, Texas, dude, at home, 1-10 in 10 straight up in their last 11 games, dude. That sucks for the fans, huh? My God. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> Total's going under in nine of the last 12 games when these two teams have played each other. And Texas is 5-1 and one in the last six when playing the New York Yankees, including that three-game sweep in Yankee Stadium. So, um... Hey, we'll see what happens with this. I don't like this game in particular, so I am going to keep it moving as well. Dream to the next one. We have uh, the Colorado Rockies, who put up a 17 spot yesterday against the Reds. Man, my God. Uh, at the Chicago Cubs, dude. Oh, the Cubs. Oh, I hate Cubs. them. Oh, my God. Brutal. Brutal. This is, the, brutal. This is called the weather, the weather team's game. Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> you got the Cubs at home with the wind getting the Rockies from, from, from thin air coming <laughs> yeah, in. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so uh, Colorado has Jorge De La Rosa, uh, Chicago Cubs, Kyle Hendricks. Chicago Cubs minus 170, and I don't have a total on that yet. And uh, I'll tell you right now, man, I did get punched in the face by the Cubs a couple of times, man, and I'm just not feeling them right now, dude. So uh, what you got there? You're not the only one. A lot of people, I saw a lot, a lot. A people kept chasing the Cubs in that Philly series, um, and he kept trying to hit the Cubs even in the last game. I saw a lot of people, because you guys know, I get a, I get tons of tweets, emails, DMs, and text messages on plays, um, and a lot of Cubs plays came in yesterday. Yep. Um, anyway, Hendricks is uh, four and five with a three point six six ERA. The Cubs are twenty five and twenty three at home. Uh, they're looking at the Rockies, who are eighteen and twenty seven on the road. De La Rosa six and four with a four point two six ERA as well. All right, uh, taking a look at. I mean, they did. You know, the Phillies, I guess, are playing pretty hot, man. They're like eight and one in their last nine, something crazy. But and um, they'll go right back to stinking, though. Yeah, of course they will. Of course they will. So uh, take yeah, because they they also have. Uh, they got to go into Toronto Blue Jays, so mm -hmm. <laughs> that's tomorrow's stuff. But today, Colorado coming into uh, the Cubs. I'm taking a look at the Cubs minus 170. Ah, nasty. Uh, Colorado, and uh, they're pretty much superior in everything here. I'm looking at um, Colorado one and six straight up in the last seven games on the road, dude. So it's just like a tale of two tapes, man. Being home versus away. Uh, the Cubs are one and six straight up in the last seven games at home, dude. Unbelievable what the Cubs have been doing to the bankrolls, man. Cubs are five and two in the last seven when playing Colorado, though, as well. So I don't know, man. You know what? I I think the Cubs are kind of who we thought they were, man. I think I'm starting to see that. Because right now, I mean, looking at the record, they're only five games over 500, man. They've been sliding like big time, dude. Next one we have on a ticket, we have the C C I'm sorry, Cincinnati Reds versus the St. Lucia Cardinals. Uh, C Cincinnati has uh, Rossiel Iglesias. Uh, St. Louis has Lance Lynn. St. Louis minus 220 with an under over of 7.5, dude. What you got here? 
Iglesias is 1 and 2 with a 5.45 ERA. Lynn is 7 and 5 with a 2.80 ERA. The Cardinals 36 and 13 are at home. The Reds 18 and 31 on the road. You know this series is going to cost me a lot of money. Yeah, it is. Um, as last time, you know, I, I should have just paid it. It was minus 230. I, for some reason, had to parlay it with the Angels, which looked too good to be true. Um, and it turned out to be too good to be true as the Angels want to lose two games to that Rangers team and then kill them yesterday. So uh, uh, maybe I'll just go ahead and lay the money down this time as the Cardinals should handily handle this uh, Cincinnati Red team. All right, sounds good. Um, so taking a look at this, I mean, you know, St. Louis, the best team in baseball by far, man. 28 yep. games over 500. Uh, Lance Lynn is pre- pretty good as well. Uh, looking at the uh, the over, believe it or not, has gone over in four of the last six Cincinnati games, including the drubbing last night, man. A football score, 17-7. to seven. My God. Uh, Cincinnati, one and four straight up in the last five games and the road as well. And uh, St. Louis, five and one in their last six and uh, seven and Dude, two the straight Bengals up the last don't even nine. put up that much. I know. <laughs> 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 You're right, man. You're right. Uh, two more games on the ticket. Arizona coming into Seattle. Arizona has Robbie Ray on the mound. Uh, Seattle has Mike Montgomery. Seattle minus 130 with an under over of seven runs. What you got there, brother? <laughs> Mr. Montgomery is four and four with a three point two five ERA. The Mariners are twenty two and twenty eight at home. Diamondbacks 24, 20 and twenty four on the road. Twenty and twenty four on the road. Oof. Ray is three and five with a two point seven two ERA. You guys know I'm salty about this Arizona Diamondback team yep. as they played me in their series, and then they came out and I think they swept the next series, didn't they? Yes. Yeah, they swept the next series. I, this team, you know, baseball just like I said, they're that driver. Actually, they um they did lose one. Did they? Okay, to the Milwaukee Brewers. So a little bit better. <laughs> it's like that driver, like being stuck on a New Jersey turnpike with that New Jersey driver. Yeah, no. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> exactly, man. Seattle is uh, four and two straight up in their last six games, and Arizona is four and nine in the last thirteen, dude. Yikes. So uh, I don't know about this series either, man. I mean, Dan still thinks that Seattle's going to make a run. I just don't see it. So I don't, I like don't either. The, yeah, I don't like the series at all. So uh, I'm going to keep it moving to the next one we have on a ticket, which is let me just take a look. The final one is uh, Milwaukee coming into San Francisco Giants. I was able to get all my future money back with Milwaukee. So now it's a free one, dude. So now taking a look at this. Um, hold on one second. Let me just make sure I get the. Um, the vocal on here. Get the vocal off here. Kyle Loesch versus Chris Heston, man. What you got there? Heston is 10-5 and five with a 3.118 ERA. He's been pretty good this year, guys. Uh, the Giants are 28-22 and 22 at home. Loesch is 5-11 uh, and 11 with a 6.29 ERA. I the know. Brew Crew is 23-27. and 27. Uh, It looks like their thoughts of winning the World Series are are starting to get back to me a little bit more realistic as they kind of got a little banged up over the weekend. Yeah, they did. They did. They are 15 and 8 in their last 23 games, dude. But as of late, man, 1 and 4 straight up in the last five. So, uh, and 1 and 4 in the last five on the road as well. So, yeah, man, I, you know what? They had to win. They have to, like, win every single series from now on. And losing one is probably puts them, a, I don't know if they're mathematically out, but it's close. <laughs> Definitely close with St. Lucia winning all the time. So that's pretty much it for the baseball, dude. I don't see anything I like, man. Yeah, I like the series. Like I said, I like the Cardinals, obviously, in the series. It's going to cost. So, you know, I'll probably put it out. You guys can play it if you want. I mean, I know a lot of you don't like playing heavy heavy money, you know, series plays. And and, and who, why would you even fight? Don't even tell what I'm doing because, like, I know what I'm doing. I Like I said, it's recreational money to me. You know, it's stuff that, like, I would spend at the bar or blow. So, you know, if you got it, if you want to play around with it, it's one thing. If you don't have it, then there's no need to get involved in it. You you guys know that's our philosophy. That's how we play. I, I mean, we are not spending thousands on baseball. I don't even really take baseball seriously. I watch very few games. I'm, I mean, I'm into the sport because I do it on here and I have to talk about it and I need to be knowledgeable of some of the stuff. But as far as, you know, like in-depth gambling on it, this we just don't do with baseball because it's just it's just too volatile and too, you know, inconsistent. All right. Gotcha, man. Gotcha. So that's pretty much it. Dream. We're a uh, great show today, dude. Dude, I kind of also like the Red Sox to win their series. I don't know why. I, I, I'll have to 
I'll have to figure that out. But I kind of like them to win that series against that. I, I, I like betting against the White Sox. <laughs> I don't know, man. They've been pretty hot as of late. Yeah, but Dank, Danks is dusty, dude. Yeah, you I know. know. I know you love fade, fade in Danks. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool deal, man. So that does it for us. Uh, Eric Parkle, it was awesome. Yeah, he was. Definitely, man. So um, what you got to do to close out of here, brother? Hey, let's get out of this piece, guys. So thank you so much for coming, for listening to our shows today. As we mentioned, tomorrow we will not be on. As Hatter's going to be in transit and traveling, um, and he's taking the equipment with him, so I can't uh, do a dolo. So sorry about that, but uh, that's where we're at right now. I want to thank everybody that's retweeted the show as well. Eric in Sconson's out there, 808. Palangi, thank you so much. Holiday, my man Slick Rick. Jordy Best, Jim Rome is a douche. Vegas Girl, 92661. Christos, Postal Pete. Snoopy bets to knock his chai picks, get a Vegas bookie. CK wins total sports edge. Jeff Ryan, Zarat King J, Julio Prado, Theo Bear, Clown Man Swag, Tommy King, JP Yippa 82, my boy Urban, JC, Joseph Del Rosario, Cassano, Jordan Ham, uh, Benjamin Rowe is out there as well. Pete yes. for Prez, Direct Sports Solution, ICU2 player. Brian Terrell, what's happening? Tip Talker, C Rodriguez Jr., Sir Mata, Super Mario's Locks. Live Life Now and Justin Hernandez just to name a few of the people that are retweeting the show and out there listening. Guys, as always, I am the dream. Always remember who you with and make the most of each and every day as you cannot get this time back. Pick up to my man Jim Rhodes is a douche saying that the Phillies are dope. <laughs> LOL. Dope. LOL. Now, they're Funny. dope at golf. Yeah. <laughs> Love his profile picture too with uh Bill Cosby and uh <laughs> It's funny, man. Take a look at my boy, man. So, guys, we are Sports Betters TV, the biggest show in the world, having an absolute blast seven days a week. We love you to death. Go out there. Go easy. Do your own homework. Bet your own plays. Make all your dreams a reality and get that money. Take care. Peace.